So I called him up. I said, Noah, what do you think? As soon as you come back from New Zealand, I quit my job. We start a company together. And he said, without, without any hesitation, yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And I remember driving for the next 20 minutes to work with the biggest smile on my face and thinking, wow, this is it. This is actually going to happen. And at that point, we had nothing in place. Absolutely nothing. I start pissing myself. I didn't have time to put myself on mute. <laughs> I'm laughing as loud as I can. The person on the other line can probably hear me laughing as well. I mute myself then. I <laughs> crouch down below my table so no one doesn't see me. But at that point, it's too late. So I can see this guy is dying of laughter, falling off his chair <laughs> while I'm on call with someone. And... I remember seeing a video and it made me think of us two. I was like, no, we need to retain our friendship over our business as well at the same time. There is a wealth of information out there. Yeah. Some misinformation, some good information, everything across the spectrum. How can you make sure that your time learning is spent effectively? You ready to talk about our online business? Let's do it, mate. Do you want to explain to the people who we actually are? Yes. So I'm Titus's business partner. We've been working together on an online business for six months. Yeah. And here we are to share the secrets, the struggles, the big ups and downs. Exactly. The honest truth of what it's like to run an online business in 2023. Uh, we're recording now in the last couple of days of 2023. Yep. Gives us a chance to reflect on the whole year mm -hmm. or well, half the year for us. And then the plans that we want to have in 2024 and just give people an insight of what we've been through. Because I don't know, if, from my side, I tell people, oh, it's going well. We might have a client there, we might have a client there, but not the, not telling people they're staying up till 5 a.m. just to get something done or rushing in the last three hours to get like a client's website done, which should have been done a week beforehand. Exactly. What people see and what people hear for about us, you know, it's all smiles, all success stories, but really running an online <laughs> business is, is a grind. And we're here to share, you know, some of our mistakes for sure. Quite and, a, I would say quite a few. Yeah, just it's a very natural point, you know, at the end of the year to just reflect on how far we've come. Yeah. Set some new goals. Talk about some things that even we haven't shared with each other properly. Yeah. So it's going to be a conversation. It's going to be legit, honest. We've got no, we've got nothing to lose. I'm, you know, I've I've got some questions for you. I've got topics for us to run through as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah, you've got questions for me, and I think it's going to be a very interesting conversation. Yeah, it would just give us a chance to actually reflect because. We talk back on, oh, we've achieved this, or we wanted to, one big example is cold calling. Oh, we could have, uh, it'd be nice to be able to speak on cold calling without a script and just be confident doing it. A couple of weeks later, we're doing that, and then we just kind of forget about that. So mm -hmm. it gives us a good chance to even start from the beginning and actually be like, okay, well, we might have done more than we thought, but there is plenty more to go. Exactly. So, so I, you know, yeah, I, I want to start where we, where we began. What made us start this online business what made us start this web design agency what kind of pushed us to mm -hmm. do it well i think you should start with a bit of background about us i am a guest on this on this podcast on, on this, this channel on this youtube channel <laughs> on the internet i don't really show my face for i would say deliberate reasons i like to what, what is that you like to be behind the scenes and I, I like to be behind the scenes i it's not that i don't want to be seen i'm just very particular about how people perceive me and i like to be in control so that makes sense. Things, you know, sort of off the cuff. Uh, I'm just recording you for my, for my YouTube channel. When, I, when I'm being shown to people just randomly with no, no focus or no point, they, for me, that's, I just feel a bit uncomfortable. But, you know, I'm loving this opportunity to sit down with yeah, you. Yeah, it's good. I've been, we've been waiting for this for a long time. It's been a plan of mine. And I think get, get our company out there a bit more. Give it some personality. This that's exactly. the main thing we've been been lacking. There's nothing about us on the internet about mm -hmm. who runs TXS Digital. So this is a very good chance. So why don't you start us out um, of your story? How how you got to where? Let's say before the start of June. How, how did you get to the start of June? Where we start mm -hmm. the company? What was you doing? Okay, yeah. So I'll work backwards. June 2023. I am back in the UK, having been somewhere, which I'll go into in a second, but. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the UK. It feels like a fresh start for me. Titus and I, and then our third business partner, who's no longer with us, who's actually just... He's not dead, but... <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's exited the company. His name's yeah. Sam. He worked with us from the beginning. To about September. Exactly. There were other commitments for him. He's now left the business. 
uh, he's very close to me, given that he's my younger brother. <laughs> so it's not like, you know, he's out of the picture. Obviously, we yeah. still include him in all of our updates. Mm -hmm. But essentially, June 2023, the latest development in my life personally was we started this online business. Mm -hmm. Now, if we rewind seven months prior to June 2023, that would have been November 2022. Yep. I decided I'm going to travel, having uh, graduated from uni, and I decided to go to New Zealand for seven months, which was a life-changing experience. I actually, before you went to New Zealand, I suggested TXS Digital to you before you left as well. Well, that's the thing. Just chatting to some of my friends recently who I haven't spoken to in a long time, they reminded me that before going to New Zealand, my intentions were actually to run a business while I was out there yeah. in New Zealand run some sort of online business i hadn't got my ideas sorted focused but i just i just had that intention and it didn't go to plan because when you're traveling in a country as beautiful as new zealand on your own meeting all these people doing all these life changing changing experiences that you're well, doing it's a the sacrifice first you would have to do to exactly drop, meeting new people seeing new things to start a business yeah and that's I, not what you did exactly i worked very hard to even get to new zealand i had to work you know two or three jobs yeah. In, in a very short uh, period of time to save up enough money after uni. And I wanted to make the most of my time there. It's a long way away from the UK. It was a 45, 46 hour flight nice. or 46 hour journey with, with a few long haul flights. So far away, first time out of Europe, first time flying solo. It was, it was an experience for me and it was very special to me. So I, I sort of took time off in that respect. And it gave me a lot of time to reflect about what's important to me in life. So when I came back, to the UK in June. You had your priorities set. I had my priorities set. I knew what I wanted to allocate my time to, and I was ready to go all in. And we'll speak later on about, you know, the fact that we've had to go all in and there's there's different ways to approach starting a new business. I mean, we didn't have to, but it was the best option we thought of instead of doing two part-time yeah. jobs we we'll, couldn't fully commit to the one that you actually wanted to do. Exactly. We, we, we all go into that in more yeah. detail because there's many different layers and perspectives. But essentially... All you need to know about me is I graduated from uni in June 2022. Come on. Say what uni you I, I, I studied <laughs> natural sciences at the University of Cambridge, which is a privilege for me. Uh, I learned a lot from a lot of capable people around me. And I, I, I've always been a very analytical, scientific person. So that's, that's sort of what I bring to the table anyway. I yeah. would say I'm detail-oriented. I, I am creative, but I wouldn't say that's what I bring to the table. That's sort of just... Comes what, along with it, it comes along with my work, but first and foremost, I'm analytical and I like to do things right, which is not always the right approach. Believe well, me. that's the one debate we've had a lot with you. Yeah, like my perfectionism. You, yeah, where I personally am just get a job done and then perfect it after mm -hmm. or get as close to being perfect as it can be because nothing can ever be perfect. Yeah. But <clears throat> with you, you like to chisel it right down to the fine detail. And you change now, but before you still like to chisel it down to the fine detail until you was happy to let it go and that kind of slowed down our processes but that's definitely changed now it's it's a conflict i've had personally just throughout life it's been the root cause of my procrastination in life i i focus so much on on it on the like on the details as you say you know we'll be doing a simple task at work in the business yeah and i will make it more than it has to be because i want it to be perfect and you know lesson number one in business is Done is better than perfect. Yeah. Because it can't be perfect and you're just going to be... Exactly. Done Done is better than perfect. And well, perfect means it's not done. So you're still kind of just always mm -hmm. working on something that's never going to be seen by anyone. Exactly. So, I mean, that, that that's sort of my story. My story is essentially went to uni, graduated, didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I, I think of myself very highly. I think I'm very capable. So I'm very critical of the opportunities that I take, which has held me back, I'll be honest. Yeah. And it's, yeah, I would say, I would say it holds me back to think very critically of the opportunities I'm given. And th this uh, business, this online business that we've started has been the first time in my life that I've really committed to something. And, and yeah, I mean, it, it's turned out. It's fun and then so difficult at the same time because mm -hmm. we, we want so much, but we're still learning to achieve those things. Yes. So it's a process of actually doing business and learning to be an entrepreneur at the same time. So Titus, why don't you 
bring everyone up to date. Where are we today as of, what is it? 29th. December, December. 29th, June 2020, uh, not June, sorry. December 29th, 2023, where are we with TXS Digital? Uh, I would say about over five to six clients under our belt. We've got a few monthly paying clients, um, which again, we'll explain our services later, but we do SEO with them and social media. And um, we've been doing loads of cold calling. I mean, quite a lot. So out of those, it's because it's the new year. We've got a few clients saying they want to create a new website after the new year, have a fresh start, everything like that. So a few projects on the way, but again, they're, they're ifs, they're not absolutes. And got working outside of our niche as well. There's in there's so many different parts to our business. It's, it is a bit, it's a mess right now, if I'm honest, mm -hmm. because we've got a contract in March, which isn't associated with us to do customer service. And now we want to change our whole business model to a grow partner partnership type of thing, which we can explain. But right now it's a bit of a mess, but it's definitely a lot better than it was a month ago where or got, two months ago or three or, months ago or three or months, ago. months ago. Yeah. But as in last month, there was that big thought of stopping the business. Um, yeah. Again, we keep saying we're going to go into it later, mm -hmm. but yeah, that was a big thought. So I want to finish with the start of our journey because obviously I presented TXS digital to you before you left and before you left, mm -hmm. that was about two months before. And that was in September, 2022. Yeah. And so Sam, Sam, who I, we've just mentioned as our third partner, he was 15 or 16 at the time. He was 16. So he's my younger brother. He's yeah. still in full-time education. Yeah. And so we, so actually Sam and I started the business in September and it was part-time. The effort wasn't there. It was just when you have a bit of time, do this. I remember, to design like a simple one page website, it took us three months and it was just constant. What do we do next? Constantly researching, not actually being proactive, send out a couple emails to feel like we're doing something, but the emails weren't personalized. They were just generic ones. I had people review them after and even me looking at them now, they were awful. So we done that and it was just on and off from September up until June or up until April. Yes, just just before we move on to the progress, in three words, how would you summarize our very first iteration of the business? What in June? In in September, when when we first started, and we had a few months of tinkering and playing around with what it means to run a business, because it was oh, all it was like, nothing. It was pathetic. In three in three words, how do you how would you describe it? Pathetic, lazy, and procrastination. Exactly, and I think a lot of people have that problem. It's you sort of validate yourself by saying, I've got an idea, I'm going to start something. You start it, it fizzles after a while because uh, as all things do, your motivation subsides and it turns into this sort of procrastinating, lazy oh, side hustle. I have hustle. to do this. Exactly. Or well, it's because people see, oh, you can make 10K in seven days if you do this. Then you sit down and you're like, okay, I actually need to set this up. I need to set this up. And it takes longer than seven days. It's just like the title that wants to grab your attention. So. Of course, we didn't expect that. I was expecting like okay, at least a month of preparation, but the pre preparation wasn't intense. It was so lackluster and just so laid back that no one would be able to achieve mm -hmm. anything with it. So then after all those months of just sitting around and not actually getting anywhere, in April, I decided to say to my nine to five, I'm gonna leave my job. No warning, no nothing. I, ju I just said, okay. Uh, this is a paying job, which had extreme benefits. Would be good right now. <laughs> I mean, you you had so can I if if I can speak on your behalf. Yeah. You had a f essentially fully remote job. Yeah. That was very flexible in terms of when you had to go into work and when you didn't. Yeah. So you were in control of your lifestyle. You mentioned that it wasn't a very challenging job, so you could no. get a day's work done in a few hours, and even that was excelling. Yeah. Beyond your teammates' uh, achievements. Yeah. So. It was a job that you could keep and do something on the side. And that's what you were doing to start with. Yeah. And But then obviously you decided, I'm going to make a commitment. I'm going to leave my job. Risk it. I'm young. Might as well go for it. You had, you had money on the table that you weren't working too hard for. It was guaranteed money. You said no to it. Yeah. And that was, that was I think, for, for you personally, it was your driving force. It was, I've given up a lot to start this business. This business... Yeah is going to take all of my hard work. It's going to have all of my heart in it. We're, yeah. not, we're not here to just, you know, sort of fiddle around on the side. There's, I had the easy way out. Yeah. And I mean, I was playing, I probably shouldn't say this because what if my previous boss watches this, but 
I was playing golf twice a week. During work? During work. During work hours. I mean, I, I got all the, I had all the work done. I was never behind on work. I was always like a week or two ahead of what I needed to do. Exactly. But still, that's bad. Me playing golf twice, twice a week, just in the middle of the day, having beers after, and then just coming back. Not even turning my computer off some days. So, I mean, that's just not what I wanted. I wasn't going to get anywhere. So I was like, all right. So in that moment, I, called, no, I remember, I specifically remember that, that, that drive in the morning. Because uh, I was like, okay, I actually do want to do this. I'm going to speak to Noah. I'll see what he thinks. So I called him up. I said, Noah, what do you think? As soon as you come back from New Zealand, I quit my job. We start a company together. And he said, without, without any hesitation, yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And I remember driving for the next 20 minutes to work with the biggest smile on my face and thinking, wow, this is it. This is actually going to happen. Week after, I told my boss I'm quitting. He was like, I didn't expect. There was no warning. There was no nothing. I didn't expect it. And then, yeah, I actually visited Noah in the last two weeks of him being in New Zealand. Travelled around together, came back, a couple of days rest from jet lag. And then we got right into work. Yeah, I, I still remember we had the three of us, uh, the three business partners, we had a meeting on the Sunday after I came back. Yeah. So it's a it's a 12 hour time difference between New Zealand and the, and the UK. I came back on the Wednesday. I remember it was my mum's birthday. Mm -hmm. And then on the Sunday, we had this sit down meeting where we said, guys, either we quit this business, you know, this side hustle that we were all trying to make happen, which had, you know, had some money coming in, but it was it was it was nothing really. It was yeah. one client, n no results. Essentially, that that business meeting was live or die for the business and we we all chose live and we all committed then and there and then that we are going to put the work in because i would rather just go straight back to you know straight to back to a nine to five actually actually making money instead of sitting around lazing around making and pennies doing things that you don't know actually will get you the money mm -hmm. like the 80 20 rule you have to, right now when because it's only two of us in the company maybe three now but uh we're in that stage where we have to do every little task where it doesn't feel like we're actively doing something to get money, but it needs to be done in order to keep the business running. <clears throat> and so just for our viewers, if we can explain what the 80-20 rule is, uh, I think it's, it's also called the Pareti principle. It's, yeah. It states that in a business, and really you can apply this to all areas of life, in your lifestyle, in your business, your health, all of this, 80% of the results that you experience come from 20% of the work. So that means in a business, 80% of the money you make comes from 20% of your efforts. And so the flip side of that is that 20% of the, hang on, have I done this the wrong way around? 80% of the work that you do only contributes to 20% of the results. And so you should be cutting that work out, uh, delegating, whatever you can do to make sure that your time is spent just doing those 20% tasks. The, the, yeah, the 20% the of tasks that yield you the 80% of results. Yeah. And this is a this is proven. Uh, I believe it was Pareto who, who published a paper or, or wrote a book mm -hmm. on, on many areas of life where this applies. So I'd known about this rule for, for ages. I'd read about it in, in business books. But yeah. it's it's one thing to know about something and another thing to apply it. Yeah, that's the thing. We, we've done so much research. We started... Uh, reading up on so many different things like oh we could do this we could, mm -hmm. we could do that and even like, in theory we could have just been been saying oh if we do this it will work but since actually having the theory and then doing it in in real world mm -hmm. you get such different results and you actually you can actually see the difference if you change one thing then there's actual beneficial results instead of in theory like in economics you say oh you just reduce the supply or something and then the demand will increase if you do it in the real world you can actually see the difference it makes so if, just us delegating tasks where if we know we can save time and someone else can just send out an email, for example. We haven't got anyone now, but in the future, just to send out an email or just send out an invoice, that's a small task which needs to be done. But if we can delegate it, it's more beneficial to us as business owners, not as a company, but to us ourselves. So, yeah, we can give some more examples of this 80 of this eighty twenty rule because it really transformed the way we were doing things. So just to give give the timeline again, we started the new iteration of the business after this big sit down on the Sunday. I we want to started, go into that after. We started in June 2023 and we had been going for a few months now, working hard, putting in hours, 
and we, we can go on to... <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I'll talk about this like now that. because I think... No, no, finish your 80-20. Well, I'll, I'll come on to that, but I think this is also very important. After we had that big sit down, we implemented this sort of system between the three of us. Um, Clockify. Yeah, we, we used an, uh, a tool called Clockify. We measured our hours that we were putting in every week. And we... I really want to emphasize, and this is, we would track how many hours we would work. And it's not like a nine to five where the clock starts at nine and it ends at five. No, this clock was, you sit down by your computer, you're going to do a task, you press play on that clock and you, you press stop as soon as you go mm -hmm. for a piss or for a shit. So this was actual time sitting by a computer and being productive in work yeah. and not just the time frame. I'm going to work between nine and 12 and then three to six. Exactly. So, so we were using this productivity tool as a way of guaranteeing that the work that we're doing has to increase because now we had quotas. I believe we were aiming for 40 hours a week yeah. for, for the two of us who were full time. 40 each. hour each. Yeah, each. 40 hours a week each of work that is productive. And we, we, we were sticking to it quite harshly, that quota. Some yeah. weeks we met it, some weeks we didn't. In hindsight now, I would say that 40 hours is too much. Because I don't know. It, it was having an effect on my stress yeah. levels, residual in, stress levels. It wasn't just, it was to make sure that there's three of us. So you want to make sure if I'm putting in this much effort, someone else is as well. Exactly. It's and accountability. That's, and the reason I, I was a big advocate for it, because when we weren't, when we were doing it part time, there was no accountability. It was just like, can you do this? OK, I'll do it. And then it's only done a week later. And, you know, that person's not working this way. We could actually see who was working live, who was doing what at each stage. And then we could be able to compare, OK, why was you not working between uh, 12 and 6 on Monday? What was you doing? That was a prime working hours. And then when you get to the bottom, oh, I was lazy. OK. And that stage, you're like, come on, pick up. We, we are starting a business. Why are you slacking and just sitting on the sofa on your phone when you could be doing something? We, we had a few frank conversations. I remember one very, it was very, a very serious conversation. I, so at the, very, at the very beginning, for whatever reasons, I, I felt like I was doing the majority of the work and i think my hours reflected that to some extent mm -hmm. and there was one morning where i think you were late to a meeting yeah i think because you had a rough night out or something like that yeah and you just like didn't turn up to the meeting it mm -hmm. was a team meeting so the repercussions were minimal but i was really angry yeah and i i i told you straight up to your face i said titus you are a moron you are laying everyone else down and i have no reason to continue with my work if you're just going to sit here and become a liability and you, you, you in, 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 I mean, fair play to you, isn't it? <laughs> fair play to you because you did, you did recover, you did pick up. And then there's been other, other instances. We can turn it around, but I've, I don't need to mention them. No, there's, like, a, there's other instances. It's, I'm not just targeting Titus here. I'm just saying that we, there are a lot of conversations where, and again, we'll come on to this, but where our friendship had to be put to one side. But I think that's, that's the good thing, because if we weren't friends, you wouldn't have spoken to me the way you did. I, I'm not sure. I think there's two schools of thought. On the one hand, Obviously, someone who you only know in a professional capacity, it's quite hard to go in on them without crossing a line. And when you're friends, that line is a lot further out. Yeah, and I can so, call you every name, name of the earth and exactly. you won't get angry at me. No, yeah, we, we have, a, we have a, a mutual respect for each other. We're both open to criticism. And that's the thing. If we shout on each other, we know we mean it. And yeah. you've actually, you, that's when you've crossed the line. And like, I mean, I've had chats with you. I'm like, no, what the fuck are you doing? Mm. And... Yeah, I mean, in, in, in all cases, the person who's slacking or whatever they're doing that's wrong, they know. And it, we, we take responsibility. So yeah. we're, we're, we're very accountable. We, it's not like one person is hiding away or, mm. or, both, or even both people. We both acknowledge when the, when the other person and ourselves are not doing what we're I supposed to be doing. We have these, I mean, we talk a lot on the phone. We do. We, we have these conversations about once every two days. Oh, why have you done this yet? How are you getting on with this? Why are you not doing that? And it's just, it's not like a pestering of, I'm watching over your back of what you're doing. No. It's, come on, let's get the job done. Let's move on to the next thing that we need to get done. And I mean, we had this problem with Sam uh, about the website. and Which was partly beyond his control because he... He had so, school. Yeah, um, he, he, had, he had other commitments, school, extracurricular things. So we automatically reduced his quota because of that. But when he wasn't meeting the reduced quota, we were also getting angry. We because, were getting very angry. Because, I mean, it's, it's the same thing. It doesn't matter if you're full-time or part-time. Your contribution is not only 
appreciated it's required yeah and of course when you start a business money was an issue mm -hmm. we were we didn't know where we we're going to get that money from and i think sam being young he was expecting the money to come in and he wasn't getting rewarded for the work he was putting he motivated him but i just understood from the get-go that even it might take a year for me to actually start earning some money so i don't know i was prepared prepared for that i think you're prepared for that um more now than last month mm -hmm. uh, but yeah it's getting better now just it's, it's just it's the ups and downs of being an entrepreneur you, you, it's never going to be easy it, i mean i keep saying this if it was easy everyone would do it and i'm copying so many other people who say that but <laughs> it's it's true and i mean yeah we've had some tough times even in these like last couple months which has been a real struggle and the thing is it some people say it gets easier as you grow, but really, it's oh, not that it gets easier. They just, yeah, the problems change. And this is, it's very easy to understand this with just some examples. So when you first start the business, obviously cash is a big problem. Yeah. Actually getting people through the door, paying, paying for your costs to, you know, keep the, keep the yeah. wheel turning. Then as you grow, it becomes, okay, how do we expand? It's an expansion problem. And with that comes, you know, how do, how do I hire the right person? How do I... Yeah invest my capital my money effectively and beyond that you know then it becomes a brand thing yeah. so every level every stage of a business has different problems and there is a naivety in many people i believe oh definitely. people i've spoken to who think if i can just get past this i'm good like it's just this next step and then i'm good like it'll be smooth no. sailing what you see online is people enjoying themselves once their business has reached a certain stage yeah but if that's what you're aiming for then your business always comes second You've all, you've all, you've just stated, if I'm aiming for the lifestyle, then my business is, yeah. it, it, it's, it's not the top of my priorities. And that's, I think this is, a, that is the whole point of this podcast. We are highlighting everything that we go through just so people have a real realization. Okay. It might not be all fun and games with the way people make out, it, make it out to be online. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not as easy. It might be, it might take a year to actually get to the stage where you comfortably live in. We're not comfortably, comfortably living right now. No, we yeah. Even now, we're having to very carefully approach our finances. Yeah, we've had to make some sacrifices. You more than me. Um, so it's it's been a struggle, and we're. I mean, plans for the new year are that that turns around and makes a quick U turn where mm. TXS can actually be a company properly. Yeah. So, going back to that meeting that we had on Sunday. On the, on the Sunday of June 2023. Yeah. We, we didn't know what business we, we wanted to do. So we, had, we, we knew we wanted to do an agency type of business. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's worth highlighting. We were already doing uh, an online business. So we had a real estate client base that we wanted to target. Mm -hmm. And we were going to offer digital marketing services to them. Just paid ads. Just sort of a very generic and I suppose... A me too agency. I'll do what everyone else is doing. It seems to be working. Let me just add to the uh, competitive exactly. bubble. So, I, 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 w I would describe it as hopping on the trend. Yeah. And that's something I really despise. So yeah, my heart wasn't really in it for, for many reasons. As, as but there's a developed. reason we chose an agency. It's because we had no capital mm -hmm. whatsoever. Yeah. The, well, the agency model is a model where your costs only rise as your client yeah. clients do. It's, it's, a, it's a lean business model. Mm-hmm. It's a business model that has grown in popularity in the last few years because yeah. of online capabilities yeah, improving. Yeah. And so we, we had the real estate agency business mm -hmm. that wasn't going very well for a million reasons. Yeah. And we sat down on this Sunday and said, we're drawing a line under that. We could continue with a new iteration of the same thing, or we can pivot and we can pivot in, in any direction. And yeah. so, so what yeah. would happen? We, we yeah. generated some options of kind of agency we could do, what kind of services we would sell, who we would target. So I think we sat down for three hours straight. I remember me being very tired after that. I was yeah. buzzing. I, I, I love the, the sort of meeting you have where time flies. You don't even see. Yeah, but I just remember I was just mm -hmm. drained. I was just sitting outside just, whoa, that, that, this is a lot to process and take in. Because mm. whilst we say things, I'm already thinking ahead of, okay, we could do this, we could do that. So <clears throat> we we didn't decide on the niche, but we did end up going with a web design agency. That's just through watching YouTube videos, just to 
generic way of finding something that you might want to do. And it just appealed to us because we didn't have to do the web design uh, like ourselves to learn it. And I don't know, it just, it was something different and it was a new new thing to explore, which you never even considered. Yeah, so one, one thing I'll say is, and I, I have my principles that I now believe in for the success of a business that I've, I've sort of read lots of books, spoken to people, seen what's going on in our, in our own mm -hmm. circumstances. I have my principles for wanting a successful business, but competitive advantage is really at the top of that list. And as, as we were sort of, I guess, evaluating our different options, we had to look at something that could work within a competitive advantage. So we had to look for something that was less trendy first of all, so there's less eyeballs on the opportunity. Yeah. We had to look at, well, we had to look at something that was compatible with our skill set. So we immediately, we saw with the digital marketing that we had no idea what was going on. And to a certain extent, the same was true with, with uh, web design, with everything else. Yeah, but there was something about it which we were like, okay, this is something we could actually learn. With, with paid advertising, it's so trial and error where does this work? Does that work? A, B testing. Uh, do I change the headline by one word to see if it works or if it doesn't? And it's just constant trial and error until you get that perfect thing. But with web design, it felt more concrete and more sure that if we learn how to make a good design and aspects that we need of a website, that's, it's, it's just plain simple that, okay, this is what we need to do. This is what mm -hmm. we present. This is done. And we've done a, we know we've done a good job. Like right now, before and I've, I've said this loads of times, but before we started, I knew nothing about websites. Right now, I could look at a website and be like, okay, that needs to put in there, that needs to put in there. Mm -hmm. There's too much stuff here. This image is bad, blah, blah, blah. And you just nitpick all the little things after just reading up and researching everything that you need to know about websites. Yes, and we're in a slightly unique position. I've got some design experience. Yeah, I've tried, I've tried making websites before, ultimately failed because I didn't quite grasp the, the scale of it. But we had, our set, we had our unique angle, and this is what I mean by competitive advantage. It's every single person or group or organization in the world has their own competitive advantage. Some are more obvious than others. If you're a web design expert, then you have an advantage in web design, yeah. right? But there are so many different ways you can exploit your competitive advantages. And I, I see it sort of as the same as your identity. Your advantages that you have are the same as your identity. So we we established our niches, the, the clients that we were going to target, we established that based on competitive advantage, I would say. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't a straightaway decision. That was that took a couple of days where we... It sounds like a straight decision, but we were working flat out. So a couple of days felt like a very long time yeah, at that stage. It, it, it took us two days um, where we said... Let's take two days for ourselves. Everyone go through every single industry you can think of, provide the pros and cons, and give provide your top three list of an industry you'd want to enter and actually sell your service to. And we got to the construction industry. Um, actually, no, we were a lot more specific. We were smart home, smart home installation installers and maintenance. Yeah, so we, we decided on smart home businesses, smart mm -hmm. home, yeah, as you say, installation businesses, because there's... There's many objective reasons that business that, that industry is. Don't need to go into it, but sure. Uh, then we started researching. The market isn't as big as we might have thought, and then expanded into construction. So AEC, architects, engineering, and so on. The 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 big pool of companies that are available, and we went from there. Um, and actually, the first week, <laughs> so we had the meeting on that Sunday. A couple of days later, we decided on each. And then I get a very interesting text on the Friday. <clears throat> that text um, was from someone I play basketball with. He just messaged me out of the blue saying, do you know anyone who, who does websites? My, my friend who's a groundworks engineer is looking to get a website done. And I straight away, without replying to him, I took a screenshot of my phone, sent it to the boys. It's like, boys, look, look. <laughs> it's just it's like, it must, has to be for us. So I said, well, we design websites. Um, we can help him with that. And he said, okay, well, he's uh, near with me right now. Can you meet us at the pub later today? I was like, yeah, sure. Met up with him at the pub, quick hour discussion, what he wanted, what he needed. And at that point, we had nothing in place, absolutely nothing. I think I was just sorting out a quick contract 
that just could be copy and pasted from anywhere. I can't remember what you guys were doing, but we we had nothing. So I said to him, give us a week, because we didn't even know our prices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were that just in the deep end. We, were... we we had literally, we had to research everything because we were <laughs> we were on step zero of running a business. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, I think it was the best thing that could happen to oh, us. Oh, 100%. Because it, obviously I have my problems as a perfectionist. If we all have our weaknesses. We needed the acceleration. Yeah. Otherwise, we would have just been, is that done? Okay, now we can move on. Let's make the contract. Is the contract done? All right, let's make a uh, proposal. Is that done? And just keep on moving until everything was done and then reach out to a client and then redo it all over again exactly. because it's not suitable. We didn't speak to anyone beforehand. So we had means tested. Yeah, from the get-go. From, from the get-go. We immediately had had results essentially to, yeah. to evaluate based on what the client wanted and yeah so after that first week <clears throat> we we planned we i found freelancers you was working on a design brief <laughs> remember that yeah i remember <laughs> you could have designed a website and the whole time you're on the design brief yes i it, <laughs> the man hours i put into designing a design brief which is simply the the document that you send to a designer yeah i could have built the whole website yeah it was it was a very backwards way of doing things, and we had a lot of instances where I, I always get so frustrated. Looking back now, in in fact, all three of us were doing things in a very backwards way at, yeah. at different stages of the of the. I mean, in a month's time, we'll look back to this moment and we'll think we're doing something backwards. I guess that's the beauty of just yeah. going for it, and you learn from your mistakes instead of doing something, then learning and then redoing everything you've just done. Yeah, we've we've been taught how to be resilient and how to yeah. How to accept the L. I was just saying yesterday to, to one of my friends, he was just saying, how, how are things going? Uh, it must be so great that you know you're getting all these clients. I said, <laughs> Where listen, did you get uh, that from? <laughs> <laughs> listen, in a two week period, every, you know, every day I wake up in a two week period, 13 of those mornings, I'm waking up and there's an L just waiting for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have to take that L. And then on the one day, there's, there's a win. Then Titus message you, no, I might have a client. Exactly. <laughs> so every day you have to wake up, ex not expecting, but understanding that you have to be tough skin. Yeah. There are going to be things that, that, that don't go your way the majority of the time. And when you do win, you have to capitalize. And yeah. so we've, we've learned to essentially get the no's, get the... We're used to rejection, which is quite good. Yeah. We're, we're used to a lot of rejection, I'd say. I mean, we've recently started cold calling a month ago and... There's been a there's been quite a few no's and I'm gonna have to tell the story of you just cracking up in the <laughs> in the middle of the phone call. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of well, our, our coping mechanism really for the for the rejection and the no's is Oh, we just, just to, take the piss out of each other. Yeah. And it works. I mean it's a it's easier to get over because if we if we took every no as they don't want they don't like our business, they don't like us. We would have stopped last month. No, we would have right. stopped, we would have stopped oh. a long, long time ago. But now, when we take the piss out of each other, we just understand it doesn't mean anything. It's just another number, which sound, it's bad to say, but it's, it's business. It's another number, so we just move on. But we'll finish with, with that client. So we got all the freelancers, you was doing the design brief, and eventually, even learning the whole process of the website design, we were able to get that website done and then even start monthly services. So I think... I think we should say what we actually do, <laughs> what our services are. Yes. Go on. You, 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 I'll let you take, take the wheel on this one and go through everything that we offer and I'll interject with anything that you might miss out. Excellent. So we're TXS Digital. We offer websites, SEO, branding, and social media services to construction businesses. We've got experience in construction. We know a lot of people in construction. Yeah. Haven't spoken to them. We understand their problems very well. And their problems we believe are unique. So that's why we tailored our services to that industry so that we can offer a meaningful impact instead of just your typical agency where yeah. uh, they, they work with everyone and they do everything. Exactly. Yeah. But not at the highest level and it's not tailored and there's no expertise involved. Exactly. Now, one thing to mention is that we are expanding on what we're doing. We're expanding on what we're doing. We're moving more into a partner uh, model. So yeah. We're going to be working a lot closer with our clients and we're going to be working with a, a lot fewer clients mm -hmm. offering what I just mentioned, the web design, SEO, marketing, all of that, offering that as the first step of our 
partnership. Yeah. We offer those services to build up the online presence. The this is this first step is like the eighty percent. Exactly. This is this eighty percent will achieve that will get you a step closer to that twenty percent which we implement after. So so yeah. and then yeah, step two is us working very closely with our clients to generate actual meaningful leads and clients and mm -hmm. projects for them through a range of uh, strategies. That's something we're working on right now. That's quite new. Yeah. So there's not much more to share on it. Mm -hmm. But essentially, things are changing. So our offering is changing. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, so that is that is TXS Digital. That's TXS. <clears throat> now, no more needs to be said. Exactly. <clears throat> we spoke we're simple. That's who we are. We're simple. And our motto is? Don't settle for average. Don't settle for uh, average. Remember the website copy we wanted to do at some point for our website. What was it? The overcomplicated text. The one that uh, did yes. not make sense. Yes, yes. At, at, at the, so, to explain this in more depth, we know our, even in our LinkedIn profile right now, right? Possibly. In our LinkedIn profile, uh, you wrote a description which no one would understand. It's what, five sentences long, explain about all the coding in terminology, even I don't understand. Use but lots then, of jargon. Yeah, but then I line after, it simply says, we design websites and create whatever. So I thought that would be a very cool way to design our own website. So about SEO, we talk about all these ex uh, extravagant things and these complex things that no one would understand. But then at the bottom, it says, we do SEO and rank you higher in Google. And originally, I thought it was a great idea. But one thing I realized with that is I asked other people who, who it wasn't just us. It was uh, my friends and my family. I went, I went up to them. I said, what would you think if you saw a website like this? And I was on the way to the gym with my mate and he goes, considering your target is construction and they see all this text, they're just going to want to click off and they're not mm. going to read it. That was sort of the point. The point was that uh, we were not mocking, but sort of doing a commentary on other agencies and other sort of, mm -hmm. I use the word pompous design agencies, <laughs> which is sort of self, self prophesied, <laughs> self prophecy. But the point was that we're like, we're, we're saying all these complicated terms, subject specific terminology, and then at the bottom in brackets, it's like, okay, we actually just design websites. Yeah, like, we, we do the simple thing. Yeah, we we're, simple we're, we're not we're not trying to trick you. We're down to earth. But it it did make sense, and I'm glad we did change it around. So, <clears throat> moving on with you, the company and yourself, actually, what has been the biggest struggles you've you've dealt with? Okay, the, this is a good question because there's a lot of ways to look at this personal struggles, struggles that I guess only I've experienced, but within the business, mm -hmm. and then things that I've seen are struggling within the business, yeah. but aren't necessarily specific to me. Now, a personal struggle of mine has been financial stability. So yeah. you're running a business, there's a question mark around all the different types of incomes you get. What's become more important for me over time, now that my life's developing, my personal life, is financial stability. Mm -hmm. And that's really raised the stakes for how long we can run this business. The runway, as I would describe it, the runway for the business to take off has shortened because I've got requirements now. Like yeah. I, I need to move out. I'm committing long term to my partner. Mm -hmm. I have, you know, I have my own personal things that have nothing to do with the business, but are affecting the business because it's just it's just changing the way I approach things. So we have sat down and had many difficult conversations. We are in different positions. Yeah. Uh, in terms of our personal lives, we have different needs uh titus is single ladies uh, but the, the point is i have a lot of things going on that i need to consider and and financial stability has shot up the priority list for me which has made things yeah. more difficult it brings us on to the topic very nicely of wanting to quit and that was i would say our biggest struggle of, of our company so far yeah so quitting now this is something that i really haven't heard that many people online talking about this is sort of a hidden secret. This is a hidden secret of business in today's world. The quitter's mindset. I've self-diagnosed myself as having the quitter's mindset. What I mean by this is that not that you have no conviction in what you do or you know, you're know you just sort of weak-minded. My point is I think quitting is a good option always. Now... Oh, I don't agree. Why, why is that? Why is that? Hold on. I know. But... Why is that? Now... In, in today's society, I mean in 2023, 2024, we have such a wealth of information and therefore opportunities right, off, right at our fingertips. Mm. The online business boom is, is beyond control. 
Uh, you see all these videos online of people in many different industry sectors, methods, making shitloads of money. And yeah. you see that even as a business owner yourself and you get distracted by it. And we've... Well, you even, start thinking, oh, what if we'd done this instead? Even in our own business, we've had distractions that we've had to say no to, Yeah, which we've done well with. But the point is, when you're starting a business, things are easy because you're saying yes to yourself mm -hmm. and to ideas. And then it gets hard. You start running into walls, mm -hmm. uh, having to overcome barriers. And that's when the quitting really has to, you have to be really careful about when you quit and when you don't. Everyone, everyone loves to quit. Everyone it's loves the to easy quit. Way out. And quitting is good, actually, in life. Uh, I think it was Stephen Bartlett who's, who's, made, who's written a book about quitting being a strength. All right, you need to give me an example because I right, don't understand it right now. Well, it, it's, it's just pl plenty, of, pl plenty of examples where uh, it's called the sunk cost fallacy, okay. where you carry on doing something simply because you're doing it. And there's, this is a, a big term in investments, in, in investing. There's a lot of other avenues that it applies to, but the point is I've come to, to enjoy quitting as, a, as, a, as an aspect because it, it means that you are not simply sticking with something because you're sticking with it. And that's what I was scared about with, with the business. I get, I get that. On the flip side, on the flip side, because I always, uh, I would say, I, I like to jump between things. Mm -hmm. I'm very interested in something new. Because of that, I say I've developed a quitter's mindset. And my criteria for success is sky high. I know that there, are, there is always something else I could be doing that will bring me success as well. The point is that, uh, not that there's always something else, but there's always something else as well. Yeah. So there are many different avenues for success. And if you simply look at what's what's working right now right this very second what trend to hop on you're never going to stick to something and you're just gonna you're gonna waste waste your time you need to commit even when things aren't working now i'll say that again because this is something that people really don't talk about enough you have to stick to things when things aren't working and that's a lesson i've learned it's about committing when things aren't working because you have to commit i remember one conversation we had where you said to me what what if it, this everything that we're doing right now isn't going to achieve us anything and that was the quitter's mindset of you saying what is the point because it could be all for nothing and in fairness i i, I it's, it's it's important to be careful i'm not invalid when i say that i'm just saying that no there, there but, is a there isn't a, a thing to evaluate it's a struggle i always have a different mindset to to what you you mm -hmm. you do so i always take the positive out of it and i always i always said to you Okay, but if we try this thing all the way to the end, it will give us a lesson which would be more useful than quitting to then do something else and learn from the mistake that we made in that one, which might have been not worth our time, to then do something which could be worth our time. Again, it's 50-50, we don't know. But is that chance that is getting us closer to reaching that point and breaking that, that ice to actually succeed. Sure. So that's why even, even now we have this conversation where Oh, I don't know if it's worth it. What is the point in doing it? I always, there is always, for me, there is always a point in doing something because I gain something, maybe not monetarily, but in my wisdom and my expertise in, in what I do, which then I can apply to new strategies mm -hmm. or new things I want to try. And that is something that I always, I always look for the positive. And sure. It's, or, I, what I can say is that we have disagreed and we'll continue to disagree on this because we have, yeah. the, this is somewhere where Titus and I, it's nothing to do with our personalities. These are just principles that we both have that yeah. come to our head. Well, I'm the optimist, you're the pessimist. We, we've that's, said that. That's one way of looking at it, but what you're doing there is you're labeling me as like the guy who's wrong. What I'm saying... Yeah, you are wrong. <laughs> there you go. This is why Titus is going to get nowhere in life. That's why you're going to get nowhere in life. I'm going to be fine. Your what, perfectionism and your pessimism. What, when, when I say quitting is a good thing... I get it from investment point of view. Because not I mean, remember, you you quit your job, right? The, that is a form of quitting, and that that is actually aligned with your right, you with your strategy. There, but... The the point is, quitting is is something that people think quitting equals bad. Quit does not equal bad. There are many instances, of course, when quitting is bad. Quitting your gym routine is bad. Quitting quitting on your relationship when it could be salvaged is bad mm. or good. It's things like that. It's yeah. it's not always obvious, but. 
quitting when things get hard just because they got hard with a business is oh yeah is yeah. something that I've learned and it's, it's it's actually very subtle. On the flip side, I I, I want to give the alternate point of view. So I've just said that quitting is bad, right? For for mm -hmm. when you're running a business, how many successful entrepreneurs that we know have had many failed businesses, right? Yeah. And you know, for a business to be a failure, you have to quit at some point. How many people have quit and then started something new? All right. Here's here's another take with they might have quit but then another business after so they didn't quit business they might have just it, it but i hate that whole phrasing of quitting is good because like you said quitting was good for me but i didn't call it quitting because that i don't know if you fail a business that means it's the exact same of us failing a strategy we technically quit that strategy but then it's yes uh, yeah, so no, I, I just I just don't like the whole phrasing of that. The, whole the definition, the my definition of quitting is not quit your ambitions, quit your dreams. My point is so failing that it's good to fail instead of quit. Yes, but what? Okay, here's a distinction for from my point of view. Failing is an event. That's something that happens to you. Quitting is an action. So, if you're running with a strategy that's not working, we've got a million examples as per usual. <laughs> but let's take email for example. Email. Cold emailing has been a real rough patch for us. We've had a few instances where it's not worked. Mm. It failed, but we could have kept going. We could have kept going and trying and trying and trying. And yeah, I get you. With your mindset, we would have been fine at the end of it because we would have just tried until it worked. What I'm saying is we quit relatively early to try something else. I'm not saying I'm right, but I'm just saying quitting and failing are different things. I just always think there's a solution at the end of it where I think if we can it, say email marketing was the only thing we did for the rest of our lives and we just kept on failing we wouldn't quit because there was no other option there was okay. there would always be an option to make it work where you do more research you find out mm -hmm. what actually works and then yeah. you make it work but, and yes, that's my but, point of view but that, that's that's where my counter example of uh, entrepreneurs with failed businesses comes in because they had to quit that business to move on to something new mm. so I mean, we, I mean, yeah, yeah we, we could spend 10 hours on this. Yeah. We're not going to make fools of ourselves by just arguing. But that's, that's what I like about our partnership and friendship, that we we disagree on a lot. Yeah. Well, not, no, I wouldn't say a lot, but we disagree. We're able to just... We have, disagree on enough. Yeah, we, we can have this good discussion where we don't get annoyed at each other just because we have different opinions. And then we just move on. We could, like, like we just said, we could go on for this mm -hmm. topic for about 20 hours. But no, we... It, that's that's good thing about our friendship and i remember uh, what three four months in into the business i was like i remember seeing a video and it made me think of us two i was like no we need to retain our friendship over our business as well at the same time because we've been friends since we were born we were born straight away from each other we've known each other all our lives or we've always been intertwined so i remember one point where we me and you didn't do anything for two three months it was we were calling each other every single day, but we didn't give each other life updates. We didn't ask how we were doing. It was more of what are you doing today? Have you done this? What days are you working? What days are you taking off? And stuff like that. And I just remember sitting down and I said, we need to do something because right now we're not friends. We're not best friends. Mm -hmm. We're business partners. And if we keep going, we're going to know nothing about each other. And at the end of the business, we'll be like, Okay, let's say we were successful a year later. A year later, we would be so invested in the business that we just don't think we've done it, but now I've lost a friend on the way. So maintaining that has been not difficult. I think it has been difficult. I think you it underestimate has. it. Yeah. I, I think it's a, very, it's a very fine line that you walk where you're either prioritizing your friendship or the business because you hear of so many failed partnerships mm -hmm. or not even partnerships, but just like failed relationships within a business. Yeah. Recently, uh, what is it, the CEO of... OpenAI, the developers of yeah. ChatGPT, their CEO left um, amidst like like no prior evidence of something happening. You see th relationships break down all the time, yeah. And that doesn't mean the relationship was broken to begin with. What it means is it got broken on the way. The people, yeah, the people that were in that relationship, in that partnership, they just ended up prioritizing business over friends, yeah. And to be able to keep both up at the top is I, I would I would say it's essentially impossible. All you can do is really juggle between them. Mm -hmm. So we we do struggle. We we struggle. I think I think we've gotten better at it though. We've gotten better, but it's it's always going to be a struggle, and things things are always going to be on the line. Yeah, of course. It's because 
I mean, we can't help but message each other every single day. And that's going to happen. So, <clears throat> I mean, I think the good thing that we started doing just like five minutes before every sing every like big meeting call, like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, we give each other like updates. Like, oh, my round of golf went like this. And there's still that kind of real aspect instead of business feels robotic a little bit. Mm -hmm. Do this, do that. Have you done that? Have you done this? Blah, blah, blah. With with our meetings and conversations, it's, oh, how you been? Should we get started now? Like there, there is that aspect of real and actual friendship where we still keep it. Obviously, it would be nice to go back to the way things were, but I mean, we are go we're going away. So hopefully that changes. So I think we'll just keep, keep, keep pushing that friendship and business together and kind of build them up. Mm -hmm. I know, I know you said juggling, but I think it is possible to just because we have such a long history. I think. I mean, I didn't see you for between what year seven, year eleven. I barely saw you, mm -hmm. and then after that, um, started seeing you more again, and it's like we never left. So it's similar with this, where okay, we might have this like two year gap where we're so invested in business and getting on each other's nerves like daily, mm -hmm. but then after it, we could just like look back and like, oh, we we meet, we done this together, and we we got through it, and now and now look at us, we're we're smiling and. We we had we shared this experience. I think that's what I always keep looking at. Me and you are going through an experience that we're not going to forget, which is fun. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's a lot of fun. Of course. Now, I've got a question for you. Go on. And my question is hypothetical scenario: you were running this business alone. Do you think you would have gotten this far? In the same time period, in a different time period, you know, two years, do you think this you would have gotten this far in in terms of business stage with uh, without a business partner or even just without me or without Sam? No. So what has it been? Uh, what has it been that's helped you? All right, there's two things. One, uh, yeah, two things. One is accountability. Um, there is always that. Not someone's like micromanaging you, but you want to be able to prove what you can do. You want to show your efforts. There's always that accountability. Like I remember there was like two or three weeks in a row where I'm busting my ass and then I look on Clockify and you done fuck all. And I was like, w and that was at the point when you were, you was in a burnout stage. You didn't want to continue with the company. And I was like, no, I'm doing this for you. So there's that mix and match where if I'm doing work and you're not doing it, but then when you're doing work and I'm not doing it, it I felt bad when I didn't do the work. So I was mm -hmm. like, all right, I need to change my attitude. So accountability is one. The second one is as soon as we started the company, we had our roles. We we knew what we were best at. You you was the creative guy, you was the, the guy with the design, with the inspiration and the creativity. I was a guy, the front facing person, speaking to people, trying to find the clients. Mm -hmm. So we, we knew our roles. It wasn't like, I'll do a bit of this, you, you do a bit of that. Straight away, we could prioritize what we were best at and excel in those areas. So right now, you design best websites better than me. So there's no point in me taking time away to learn and get to a similar level and do what you do. Okay. We're able to distribute those tasks and just move quicker. So yeah, that, those are the two things. Of course. Okay. Accountability and the delegation or using what we're good at. Complementary skill sets. Right? Yeah. So what would you say to all the, all the entrepreneurs out there, all the, you know, budding, enthusiastic, business starting people who want to do this alone? Because there's many of them and there's a lot of people out there who believe that they can do it all on their own. What would you say to them? Sit down and do it because there's going to be a lot of procrastination because you haven't got anyone else telling you to do something. So even now, if I'm on my phone and I say I need to do something, I just ch literally chuck my phone on the floor, get my computer and I'm like, all right, I'm doing it. And then that's just getting rid of distractions. And then the second thing is, just get it out there and then just make it better. I think we said this at the start. Get it out there in the first place, no matter how shit it is. Get out in the first place because then you know what to change. If you change it before it's even been read or, uh, what's the word, critiqued by anyone, you're going to be changing the wrong thing and it's not actually going to help you in any way. So if you put it out, let other people see it, even your close friends will be able to tell you, okay, I think you should change the font of this. I think you should change the color of this. That will make the, your improvements better because it was targeting an audience instead of just yourself. Are you talking about the content? 
anything as in like but you but, put out a um you put out your drop shipping you have a you want to make your website perfect so it's like best for the user i would still put it out there and then someone might send a dm oh with this website the button isn't working then you change that and you just keep on getting it to its optimal state okay so but that's that's things customer facing things so things that your customers will see and therefore the opinions of your friends and family make sense because they could be potential yeah. customers what about the internals if you're on your own how are you going to tackle the all, all the internal problems that you face as a business operations sales marketing to some extent finances how do you tackle all of that when you don't have someone else next to you i say you need a skill set you either learn a skill set or if you have a skill set it's beneficial but I guess we didn't have a skill set and we learned after a month, I'd say, I, I, no, after a month, we weren't perfect, but we knew what we were talking about. So get that background knowledge in place. So you know what you're talking for about. For what? Sales? For any, like, for your, for your service. So for your industry, because you don't want to just enter, let's say, let's say. But I'm talking about the internal problems you'll face. We're not talking about services or customer facing. What? So, so sales? Like, so like, yeah, you, I don't know how to do sales. And I've written a cold calling script that isn't working. I don't have anyone I can ask. I don't have anyone. You live and you learn. You, it's trial, trial and error. We, we didn't. Uh, it's but we had each example. other is my point. My point is, if you're on your own, what do you do? Because it's, it's all in your head. You don't know what's wrong because there's no one else telling you, okay, this isn't really working. You but it's to... a numbers game. So we, even with the cold calling, all right, we had, we, we had each other, but essentially we had more numbers. Cold calling is an example. So numbers isn't applicable to just cold calling. I'm talking about any any problem you face internally. I know, but we we attempted 200 calls a day, right? I had my script, you had your script. We trialed it and we just kept on calling, calling. At the end of the week, we looked at what went well and what we didn't. And then we merged both of our cold calls into one to make the script that we have now. So you, you just have to go through the pain of getting the nose but actually, instead of being down about the nose and being like, oh, why does no one want to work for me? You think about at what point did someone not become interested in what you want to do? Then you, you make a cold call the next time. You change that one thing. If it works, you're like, okay, that is one part of the script. That's 50% of the script completed. Can I get to 75? If you can't, you look at the problem of the 75 and be like, okay, this part needs changing because each time I've gotten through to that, this stage, people have always put the phone down. So what is, what is it exactly? And that's business. We didn't know it, but through trial and error, through making mistakes, making mistakes, that is the main thing. You're going to just have to get yourself out there, do the things, make the mistakes, learn from it, and then you become an expert. Okay. Let me, let me give you a different scenario. It's like theory against practice, like being practical. Sure. What, but here's, here's another example, which is less, less based on trial and error. So with cold calling, it's an instant, instant feedback thing, right? Mm -hmm. So it's easy to iterate because you're getting the feedback constantly. Mm -hmm. What about a business decision where you have to choose between investing everything, let's take the dropshipping example, investing everything in stock or investing everything in advertising. That's the decision where you can't do trial and error because it's, it's, a, it's an all or nothing. How, how can you face difficult internal decisions where your friends and family can only really offer, you know, bits of advice? How do you, combat that as an individual when you're on your own solo founders if i don't know if you you don't you only go all in on something if you're 100 percent on it so that decision i don't know if that would be a bit i don't know if it would be a smart business decision because but, but my point is how do you how if you're on your own there are always going to be decisions where you're going to be right you're going to be wrong you're going to be wrong okay and you're not going to be right at the whole every single time we might make a decision between us to raise our prices to like 100x of what they are now. That might be a wrong decision or it could be a right one. You never know until like later on. It's like that story of the Chinese man. I don't know if I don't know if I should explain it, but he loses a horse one day. All the farmers come over, "Oh, you're so unlucky." And he goes, "Maybe." And then the next day that horse comes back with two other horses. All the farmers come back and he goes, "Oh, it's such great news that you've got more animals now." He said, "Maybe." The next day his son is walking the horses or whatever. And he breaks his leg and they're like, oh, that's so bad, such bad news that um, your son broke his leg. And he's like, maybe the next day the army comes looking for his son, but he can't go to the army because he's got a broken leg. They're like, oh, that's such great news. He didn't have to go. And he goes, maybe. But the whole thing is that 
you never know if the decision is right or wrong up until after because you might have made a wrong decision but it's good in a way because you next time you know okay maybe i shouldn't even put myself in that situation to make that decision so it's a learning curve it might be an expensive learning curve which might not be good for people starting out but it's the lessons that you need to do and the risks that you need to be willing to take to learn from it and then become a better, better business person okay what about the advice of finding someone so you're not alone you need someone you can trust but so you've you've all of the solutions you've provided so far are for someone who's who's going at it going at it solo you're saying all of these strategies that continue to be going solo mm -hmm. what are the challenges and benefits of teaming up with someone you need to be on the same wavelength because I mean, before we started, I said, Noah, we, it's not a half assed shit. We are going all in, putting all our efforts into it, and then we'll see what happens. And then if you're both on the, you need to be both on the same page, because if you're not, like I said, one person's going to be trying their ass off, the other one's just going to be laid back. Oh, I might just send out one email today and just see what happens. So there needs to be that balance of like-mindedness of, okay, we both, you both want to achieve the same goal. So you need to, I mean... Friends is always, it, your friendship group usually is the people that have a similar kind of mindset as you. Okay. Just to cut you off, sorry. What about all those people that say never go into business with your friends? No, I don't agree with that. You don't agree with that? No. Why? Well, they, they just see it from the point of you saying relationships get broken, but we know so much about each other where I know you might be better at this, so I'm able to... Just get the I, I'm able to get the best out of you and you're able to get the best out of me. And that just accelerates what we do. And I don't see if your relationship is that good, it shouldn't be affected by business. Okay. So if if you can't get through with business with your friend, that means they weren't a good friend in the first place. So Okay. I've got another question for you. Go on. So in a business, at the start, you're going to be doing a lot of learning. You've already said, learn mm -hmm. from your mistakes. How can you make sure that you're learning effectively uh, in terms of the knowledge and information that you're consuming? How, how, how do you make sure it's effective? Because as I've said before, there is a wealth of information out there. Yeah. Some misinformation, some good information, everything across the spectrum. How can you make sure that your time learning is spent effectively? So I would say just not going off one YouTube video, but going off around five, just to get a better understanding, not to get one person's viewpoint, but to get all of it. Obviously not to get sucked in where you're just trying to get all that knowledge from, from nothing. So that's one way. And focusing on one area instead of a big subject where you're going to take in information that you don't need. For example, with Google Analytics, you could, I was looking up how to make an event for conversions. So I wasn't looking at the whole aspect of Google Analytics. I was looking at one certain aspect that I needed to know. So I researched that and got better instead of, like I said, taking a pool of information, which isn't necessary and just doing that. So really focusing on the things that you need instead of things that are interesting. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's just, that is one thing I would say just for learning and not being overloaded with information. Yeah. Right. Like a need to know basis. Yeah, yeah of course. So just to finish up with, uh, mm -hmm. with, we have a little conversation with a little podcast. Um, what's the thing that's been keeping you going with this company? Okay. <clears throat> Obviously not money. <laughs> Definitely not money. <laughs> no. It's a good question because we've spoken a lot about quitting and all of that stuff. But yeah. We're still here, right? Yeah, we're still doing we're still it. still wearing the t-shirts. Oh, lovely. Which look branded, amazing, by the uh... way. It's a good question. What I would say is... And this is going to sound cringe or whatever label you want to use, but personal development. Yeah. I've seen myself grow so much. And that's both in like business, but also the soft side of skills mm -hmm. like communicating, even now, communicating in front of a camera, having the confidence to say things to people. Yeah. yeah. And actually say the right thing and think on the spot of do this. Because we get often asked about certain things and we have to think on the spot and do things. I think we both got a lot better at that. Yeah, well, I mean, there's so many ways you could measure our progress. Yeah, but it's really important to me as well. The personal development thing is it's a, mm. it's got a special place in my heart because for so long, I've like identified as someone who's business minded or like entrepreneurial, 
but not actually done anything about it. So now, now I've actually taken steps. Not only have I taken steps, you can see that I've progressed. Yeah. And I really am much more uh, like the person that I want to be. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest way to describe it. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, as we're saying, communication, negotiation even. Yeah. Uh, strategic thinking, sales understanding. Mm -hmm. Lot, As I say, lots of hard skills, like cold calling is a hard skill. You can tangibly learn that. Yeah. But also soft skills, like uh, navigating a difficult conversation, whether that's with your business partner, whether that's with a freelancer who's not doing their job properly, uh, a client who's, you know, slacking. Remember that one big thing that we made in our uh, meetings? We sat down once and we said, we spend way too long talking about things we already know. Instead, let's say what we need. If someone doesn't understand, then explain. Because we used to, our meetings used to be at three hours for no reason. Then we used to clockify that. Mm -hmm. um, but now, our meetings, what, 20 minutes, half an hour? Depending on how big thing is. But we used to have a weekly review. We've kind of slowed that down because it's just two of us now. But even now, I've done, I don't have, I, for example, spoke to a client. I'm doing the SEO for them or I'm writing an invoice, invoice for them. Before I used to tell you in the email, oh, I wrote this, I wrote that, I mentioned this, did I miss anything? Now mm -hmm. it's, I've sent the email, sent the invoice, should get paid soon. And you know everything you need to know. There's no extra information for you to hold for no apparent reason. Mm -hmm. That has just got so much quicker. And we can just see it in ourselves. I said this to you the other day where the goals that we set at the beginning were so far from, but we're still not happy from where we are because we keep on setting new goals. And obviously our main goal we haven't reached, but those little mini wins that we have ourselves, we can see them. And just from looking back, what, two months, we've actually just, maybe business hasn't gone far, but us as people, it's, it's been, it's actually been enjoyable just to be like, oh, I didn't know how to do this before. Now I can, I can confidently do it. Mm -hmm. Like with the sales calls, we, we had a lot of fun where the best way for us to deal with uh, our rejections and our no's is, with a smile. With a smile to laugh it off, not take it seriously. And to finish off, I'll, I'll explain with one uh, funny story that we, for the first time in the company where I wet myself because of uh, <laughs> uh, just the way we, we operated things. So Nora and I, when we first started cold calling, we would hop on a online call so we could listen to each other speaking and then critique each other. So we kept on doing this. Just having having yourself on mute while the other person's on speakerphone. Yeah. And, and we could hear each other's calls uh, without, without obviously this. And it helped with, let's say I had an objection, you could listen to that objection and then use it for yourself to know. Yeah, it's just, it's essentially doubling the, the amount of data you can learn. Yeah. Instead of me saying out loud and no one not fully understanding it until mm -hmm. he experienced it himself, but you experienced it in the situation at the same time as I did. So I had said to Noah, one of his, part of his sales pitch is saying, this is Noah, and I'm from, um, he would say that all the time. And he would say like, this is Noah, and I'm from um, Essex. I pointed that out to him. And the next call we done, he started with the exact same line, same um, same filler. And obviously, we're on call together. So uh, <laughs> I start pissing myself. I didn't have time to put myself on mute. <laughs> I'm laughing as loud as I can. The person on the other, other line can probably hear me laughing as well. I mute myself then. I <laughs> crouch down below my table so no one doesn't see me. But at that point, it's too late. It's too late because <laughs> I've got my laptop out in front of me as I'm making the call because we've got all our spreadsheets and yeah. the CRM. So I can see this guy is dying of laughter, falling off his chair <laughs> while I'm on call with someone. And, <laughs> you know, my girlfriend will be the first person to say this. I'm not good at multitasking. So if I'm seeing that, I just I burst out laughing on call. So yeah, he was in the middle of his pitch. <laughs> He sees me laughing, starts laughing himself, and just puts the phone down. I had to. I was acting on instinct. Okay, I had to end that call because I'm so sorry to whoever that was out there. I've probably got your name somewhere. I could, I could probably email you an apology. It was that was the first time I felt you know <laughs> this business thing is. is... I have it made for such a good moment though, and like we said, we don't we we just laugh about it. It just happens and. It made it for a good like day just to think about that moment. So we have fun. Like we said, there's ups and downs in this company with any company, but we're having fun. We've got big plans for 2024. So hopefully we can do another podcast, more insights, 
talk about different things, not just specifically about what we're doing. Maybe more insights into the operations that we do, because we could definitely talk about that and how we've made systems to actually build a business. Yeah, we can talk about specific problems we've had and how we navigated to a solution. It's not necessarily that the solution is applicable to everyone, but the process, how you get there, yeah, it usually we, is. We always have that thought process of, okay, we might have a similar problem, but the way to navigate through it and actually solve it and come out on the better side of it. So yeah, yeah that's definitely something we could do. But yeah, this has been TXS Digital. Uh, myself and Noah so it'd be great to hear some feedback for yeah. anyone watching at the time of recording Titus has how many subscribers 92 92 um, okay so 92 views we're expecting <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to like and subscribe there we go thank you Noah <laughs> you know the deal so yeah little little insight into who we are this is TXS Digital the guys behind the the gradient the the three letters so I hope you enjoyed and yeah, let us know what you, th what you think. Yeah, see ya. Bye-bye.